I'm Mitch Resnick. I'm a professor of learning research here at the MIT Media Lab, and I lead a research group called the Lifelong Kindergarten Group. And even though I work with advanced technologies, I've gotten my greatest inspirations from observing how children learn in kindergarten. What is, it, what is it that's special about children in kindergarten? Well, when I think of the traditional kindergarten, I think of kids playfully creating things in collaboration with one another. You might have one group of kids building a tower with blocks, and in the process, they learn about stability and structure. In another place, kids might be making pictures with finger paints and crayons. In the process, they might learn how colors mix together. What's most important is they're developing as creative thinkers. They're learning how to work on creative projects, to start with an idea, to follow it through, to iterate on what happens, to experiment, to try new things. And I think that's so important in today's society for everyone to grow up as a creative thinker. We're living in a world that's changing more quickly than ever before. So what you learn today, much will be obsolete tomorrow. So what's most important is the ability to think and act creatively. But unfortunately, a lot of our school system is not set up to help children develop as creative thinkers. After kindergarten, kids often go into classrooms where they sit, fill out worksheets, listen to lectures, based on an educational model that seems to focus on delivering information or transmitting information to kids. And what I think we need is to take that kindergarten approach of learning through designing, creating, experimenting, exploring, and extending it throughout all of school, in fact, throughout all of life. Now, there's a problem. If you go into many kindergartens today, they're becoming more like the rest of school with kids filling out worksheets and doing exercises. What I want is exactly the opposite, to make the rest of school more like kindergarten and the rest of life like kindergarten. And that's why we call our group Lifelong Kindergarten. So why isn't that that hasn't happened? Well, I think there are lots of reasons for it. Part of it has to do with the media and technology at our disposal. You know, in kindergarten, if you have blocks and crayons, that's great for learning kindergarten concepts like number and shape and size and color. But as you get older and start to work on more advanced projects, just blocks and crayons aren't enough. So we're always trying to see how can we use new technologies to extend the kindergarten approach to learners of all ages. Let me give an example. We've worked for many years with the Lego toy company. And again, it's not surprising, since I believe that we learn a lot by designing and creating things, Lego's a natural partner. With traditional Lego bricks, when kids, kids build houses and castles, they learn a lot in the process. We've connected the traditional Lego materials with new digital materials, building electronics inside the Lego bricks so kids can build things that move and react and interact and communicate. So we've worked on projects like the Lego Mindstorms Robotics Kits, where kids can build robots that move and interact. In the process, they learn a great deal. It's wonderful to see how this is spread around the world. I travel around, and kids around the world are now designing with these new technologies, extending that kindergarten approach you know, to all ages. Uh, now, I want to emphasize, this is different than a lot of the electronic toys that you see in toy stores these days. Toy stores are full of electronic toys. Uh, you might go up to a doll and you, you know, poke at its belly and it starts singing, or you wave your arms and it starts dancing. But all you get to do is interact. That's not where the real learning happens. Whoever designed the electronic toy probably learned a lot, but kids don't learn much just by interacting with these toys. We want to give kids the opportunity to design and create things themselves. That's where they're really going to learn things and become creative thinkers. And it's not just dealing with the physical world. But we know a lot of kids these days spend a lot of time dealing with the online world and virtual worlds. And we don't want them just to be interacting in those worlds either. Too often, kids are just spending time browsing and chatting and playing games. We want them to be designing and creating and experimenting and exploring, like in kindergarten. That's what led us to develop software called Scratch. It's a programming language that allows kids to create their own interactive stories and games and animations and then share their creations with one another. Every day, there are you know, thousands of projects that are shared on the Scratch website by kids around the world. Uh, but it's not so much the numbers that make me so happy. It's the diversity of projects. If you look at the Scratch website, you'll see kids are creating everything from animated stories to interactive birthday cards to animate comic strips to dress up doll games to interactive artwork to online tutorials to virtual tours 
almost anything you can imagine. And that shows me that kids really are developing as creative thinkers as they do this. Uh, and I think that's what's really going to be so important to succeed in today's, in today's society. Now, this is part of a growing trend of an interest in helping kids learn to code. But I think our approach is different in some important ways. There are a lot of people who are emphasizing the importance of coding or programming these days because they see great job opportunities. And don't get me wrong, there are great job opportunities, but there will be a greater demand and a need for programmers and computer scientists. But that's not what drives us. It's, I like to make the analogy with writing. We want all kids to learn to write, not because we think most kids will grow up to become professional writers or professional journalists, but because all kids need to learn how to express themselves, to share their ideas. And we think of coding or programming the same way. Yes, it could lead to job opportunities, but more important, it allows everybody to express their ideas, to be able to communicate in new ways. So our approach to coding is focused on helping kids learn to think creatively, reason systematically, work collaboratively. Those are essential skills for everybody, regardless of what they're gonna grow up to be. So we aren't interested just in kids learning to code, but coding to learn. As they, as, they, as they learn to code, they'll also learn important skills about how to break down problems into simpler parts, how to express their ideas in new ways. So I think that what's important is as, we, as kids enter a world that's full of these new technologies, we don't want them just to be interacting or consuming the new technologies, but designing and creating. We try to think of it in terms of uh, four words to begin with the letter P. We developed these four guiding principles. This came out of a course that I did with my colleagues, Natalie Rusk and Philip Schmidt. We said that as people grow up learning, it should be focused on projects, peers, passion, and play. We want people to learn by working on projects, not just responding and filling out a worksheet, but work on projects where they design something and work on things that are meaningful to them. They should do it with peers. We know that the best learning happens when we learn with and from other people around us, not just staying by ourselves. We want people to work on things they're passionate about. We know that people will work longer and harder and persist in the face of obstacles if they work on things they care about deeply. And then play. And when I say play, I don't just mean playing games. I mean a type of attitudes towards, towards your interactions. When someone is playful in their interactions, that they're doing things where they take risks, they test the boundaries, they try new things, they continually experiment. And that's the best way to develop as a creative thinker, by projects, peers, passion, and play. That's the approach that we use here at the MIT Media Lab, and that's what made the Media Lab such an innovative place. It's what's worked in kindergarten. Now what we need to do is just take those ideas and help change the rest of the world.